You're listening to Five Things with Lisa Birnbach. Yes, I'm Lisa Birnbach, and it is January 11th, 2019. And here we meet again, as we did last week, talking about five things that make us happy. It's kind of a gratitude podcast, but it's also kind of a, it's just my podcast, so I can talk about whatever I want to do or whatever I want to talk about. And I must say, I've been thinking about how I want to remember everything I've ever done, everyone I've ever met, every experience, every memory, every anecdote. And then you get to a point in your life where there's a lot of stuff in that little brain, including, in my case, many old folded up paper bags, including the one from a different drummer, a store on Lexington Avenue in the 70s that was designed by Peter Max, the pop artist. I have one of those in my head. I probably have one of those in my storage area. But honestly, this is the beginning of the year, and it's it's a time of reflection, as is the end of the year and the middle of the year. Don't get me wrong. And I am very lucky that my children, whom I refer to as my exhibits, keep me accountable. So if I don't remember that time on that vacation where one of us misbehaved, they're sure to. Thank you for that. We have just entered the Winter Entertainment Awards season. I used to be so excited about Golden Globes and Oscars, and I guess over the years I've become less excited, and I think I know why. First of all, I don't see everything, so I don't have a vested interest in who wins. And also, there are a lot of actors I don't know or care about. What can I say? I'm just being honest. But it used to be so exciting to see real fashion what, accidents or or moments of creativity that might be hard to understand. But now everybody's so perfect because everybody has a very high-priced stylist and they all borrow clothes from very exquisite designers and they all borrow beautiful clutch purses and beautiful jewelry and shoes and everybody sort of looks the same. Well, happily, we have a wonderful guest today who is an adorable style of her own. She doesn't need no stylist. <laughs> and honestly, when I see you, I appreciate the whimsy you put in your clothes. Our guest is Caroline Ray, hilarious <laughs> comedian, actress, game show regular. She was Aunt Hilda on Sabrina the Teenage Witch, not the satanic version that Christian Bale <laughs> is in, but her own the earlier, better one. And she hosted her own talk show in the morning. And she is here with us live in the studio. Hi, Caroline. And she does Pilates with you. Yes, we do Pilates oh. together. And we've known each other on strangely yes. for a long time, but not well enough. Okay, so I've brought you a little gift because of the heritage from which I know you, which was your first book. So this is the ultimate gift for you. Wow, thank you. It's very you. exciting when you give <gasps> something visual over. Oh, my Do you know what gosh. it is? It is a candlestick? It's a head vase. It's not a candlestick. These were very big in the 50s. Can you all? And they have pearls. That's why. This is a... And this, they're, they're, they're collector's items. Oh, and this is gorgeous. You put a flower up there, and it looks like it's the top of her hat. It's her chapeau. Yes. It, 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 the flower goes on top. Yeah. But what's so cool is it it looks like it was painted in the 40s or 50s, but it has pearls. And of course, I used to say you could wear pearls with anything. Exactly. Even a vase. Even a vase. <laughs> wow. Thank you so much. I You're love welcome. it. You know, they, oh, I, I love it. They were like a big thing. I think it was in the 50s. You used to actually buy them at like Woolworth and... Women love them, these head vases, and I actually collected them for a while, and I have one of Jacqueline Onassis, well, Jacqueline Kennedy, no. and, uh, you know, I know Caroline ever so slightly, and she's so lovely, and I said, Caroline, is this something you would ever want? She was like, creepy, no. And I was like, okay. <laughs> <All right. laughs> the I sentiment was there, but yeah, creepy. <laughs> I have to say, if Jackie Kennedy was my mother's role model in all things. Yes. And and her visual model. What is she wearing? How does she? What's her posture? What are her glasses? How's her hair? And she, we can't even remember how big an influence she was because in a world of refinement and accomplishment and college graduates, unlike today's fame, 
she was it. Right. Um, when I first moved to New York in 1989, I was a cater waiter. And I catered a lunch for her and Morris Templeton when she was dating him. Right. And, you know, I told my mother, but it got translated to my mother's bridge group as, Care's having lunch with Jackie. <laughs> <laughs> there was no mention that I was serving the lunch. And none needed. <laughs> none needed. She, uh, Caroline Kennedy and I got braces at the same day at the same oh. orthodontist. And I didn't <laughs> know that because I was stuck in a ch- In those days, getting braces took about... 14 hours. You got yeah. a day off from school and oh, you, yeah. and it was horrible. And I was sitting in the chair tasting this horrible cement, letting it dry, not realizing that Jackie Onassis and my mother were alone in a waiting room for 14 hours. Oh, my goodness. Your mother must have been losing her mind. Losing her mind. And of course, in those days, prehistoric, there were no cell phones or anything. So she mm. couldn't sneak a picture. She couldn't take a picture. She couldn't take notes. She just had to pretend that it was another lady in the waiting room. <laughs> 14 hours, oh just gosh. the two of them. And when Caroline and Jackie Kennedy finally left, Dr. Boylan came out to my mother and said, she asked me only one thing. Was that really Mrs. Bernbach? <laughs> Made her day. <laughs> Little New York stories. I sat next to um, Sigourney Weaver once, and it was when they had those like giant, like the, the phones from Wall Street. Remember on the airplane, <laughs> yes. you could make a phone call? Yes. And she sat down next to me, and I was trying to be very casual. with. And it was right after... What was that great movie that she was in? Um, Year of Living Dangerously or something like that? No, it was when all the couples picked the keys. (gasps) Ice Storm. Ice Storm. Okay. So there had been a giant ice storm in Montreal where my mother um, is what was from. And so I called my sister and I'm like, you know, Sigourney Weaver is like inches from me. And I say to my sister and I go, hi. And she's like, why are you calling me from an airplane? (laughs) I'm like, how's mommy? And she goes, what are you talking about? I go, well, there was that giant. And she goes, ice storm. And I say, exactly. And she goes, oh, my God, you're sitting next to Sigourney Weaver. She got it in, like, one guess. She was unbelievable. Oh, you see, I, I don't know. have a sister. I guess that's what they do, right? Right. You have brothers. I have brothers. They don't yeah. get me in one guess. No. My sister, yeah, she can finish. We, my mother had this th- uncanny nature of, like, she would think the first sentence and say the second sentence out loud. And so I think that's how we all communicate. Wow. Like, we, you know. she that's would always. That's so cool. Yeah. That's so cool. Well, it, it it you know, we pretend that we're all above it all and we don't notice, but we notice. Yeah. We do. Mm-hmm. And living in New York, you notice, you see things. I once fo- I, I mean, I have followed people down the street. I pointed out to two of my daughters, I call them my exhibits, um, the the stretch of Broom Street where I once followed Queen Rania for a block. <laughs> like that was an important place in the city in which they grew up. I'm happy to say they knew who Queen Rania was. And <laughs> let me say, she is gorgeous. Yeah, gorgeous. Worth following for my, a block. When my sister got married on the steps of Fifth Avenue Presbyterian, we're all doing the family photos, Antonio Banderas walked by. Oh, come on. I left the wedding party You're and right. followed him for several blocks <laughs> in a bridesmaid gown. And brought him to the reception, I yeah. hope. And I later like did a, you know a game show with him or something, and <laughs> he was very sweet. I was like, oh. Yeah, I chased you. There's certain just, people. There's certain people you just have to. Yeah. Is there anyone that you haven't met that you'd like to meet? Oh, everyone. Really? Well, I would, um, who's alive now that I would like to meet? Let me think about that. Yes, right. there, there are plenty. Are there for you? Um, Don Rickles was one I really wanted to meet, and I got to open for him. That was exciting. But oh, I never wow. got to meet um, B. Arthur. And I really loved her. And she was a huge influence. Oh, wow. And I've met Carol Burnett, but I burst into tears both both times, just full on I sobbing. W- I would sob if I met. Yeah. Oh, I met Mary Tyler Moore. That was a big deal for me. Wow. And um, I had Aww. already embarrassed myself terribly when I had met her former husband. Um, Grant Tinker? Grant Tinker in Los Angeles. I didn't drive in those days, I'm native Manhattan, and I... Somehow, I was interviewing him, and I needed to get a taxi to my next destination. He said, oh, I'll drive you. Let's take the Jag. And I thought I was falling in love. (laughs) And so, in order to seal the deal... He was so handsome. Craggy. Yeah. In order to seal the deal, I started doing an impression of Mary Tyler Moore, which I thought, wow, that is really a death wish, because... They weren't married anymore. They probably didn't like one another. And there I was saying, oh, Mr. Grant. You know, it was terrible. (laughs) 
<laughs> Why did those things happen to it? And then it's Ugh. like that weird thing. And then just, it's only a second later that you go, oh, that was terrible. Can I just Oh, I know. Can rewind? I have a do-over? Paul Newman. You did? Yeah. That was, yeah. I wrote something for him once, and oh, that was did? exciting. He didn't like it, but that meant he had to work with me to right. make it better. So we had more time together because I was so inept. When, so when that I, was good. When I first, again, in the, in my cater waiter era, he used to go, I used to, um, <laughs> I was so clueless when I moved here. I was a hat check girl at Christie's during the auctions. Oh, wow. And I would give out the numbers. No clue that you had to keep the other half and associate it with a coat. Oh. I just gave out numbers. I just, yeah. And, and, and no What's idea. your lucky number, yeah. sir? <laughs> <laughs> you get a sable. <laughs> <laughs> but Paul Newman used to go to those. And because, uh, you know, anyway, he, he, he was absolutely gorgeous. The most gorgeous, right? Yeah. You know, I actually met Robert Redford and I was still like complete breath taken away. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, yeah, still. I yeah, know. He's still gorgeous. I know. Chris Pine these days, I think, is pretty gorgeous. Yes. He kind of looks like a combo of all of them. I didn't realize until I watched the Golden Globes that Chris Pine is a legacy actor. I didn't either. And then I totally recognized his father. But his father, I never heard of. Oh, no. Uh, was, it wasn't was a, like yeah. Lloyd Bridges. Right, thing, right, right. Right? So last night I tweeted that, um, I said, I love Steve Carell. Yes. But why is a man giving Carol Burnett this award. That's a very good point. Wait, let me just time out and say we are taping this for the weekend, but oh. last night was the Golden Globes, which we both separately watched. Anyway, um, moments later, I got a direct message from Steve Carell. No way. Yes. That said, because she asked me to. And I said, you know what? It is no slight to you. You're amazing. But I just thought it would have been a great opportunity because she was such a pioneer and opened the door for so many women. That's just like for one of those women that she led the way for, it would have been nice to see her give the award. Certainly would. And he was so gracious. And he was like, of course, I completely agree. But, you know, I was so honored when she asked me. And I said, well, you know. Now we love him even more. I said, now I'm going to have to go and watch Crazy Stupid Love for the 51st time because you're so gracious. But it was funny. It it must. Well, number one, he follows you on Twitter. Well, no, he just sent me a I mean, for the moment, he just said to... It, it was well, very nice. It was, that it is was, very nice. But it was funny that I was like, you know what, though? It's really like this is an opportunity for a woman. It would have been great to... Vicki Lawrence. Vicki Lawrence. Julie or Andrews. Julie Andrews, her good friend, or Bernadette yeah. Peters, her right. good friend, or Samantha B, who she doesn't even know. Or, right. Yeah. Well, also, I mean, she, Carol Burnett was definitely it for me. Yeah. That was who I wanted to be. That was it. She inspired me. I was like, I, I, this is this is what I want. I remember going to her studio. I mean, obviously the show was not on there, but where she filmed in that area. And I was like, yeah, this is this is who I am. This is who I want to be. And I'm going to live amongst palm trees yes. and have have uh, Lyle Wagner serve me tea. And Lyle Wagner. <laughs> is he alive? I believe so. He has the same birthday as me. Ooh. And then Harvey Corman and I were in this crazy poker game. And I, every time I sat next to him, he'd go, you're not going to cry, are you? People your age always cry when they meet me. I was like... I, I'm going to cry a little. You mean so much to me. you know. Harvey Corman was one of the funniest, funniest comedic performers I've ever seen. Yeah. He could make me cry. But I want to tie this up to Sorry. one time that I met you at the Beverly Hilton Hotel. Uh-huh. And you know what? There's a guy behind the a concierge at the Beverly Hilton where the Golden Globes take place yes. who looks just like Tim Conway, who sounds just like Tim Conway. And I've said to him, you know, you look like Tim Conway. And he rolls his eyes as if he hasn't heard this 150 times already that day. Right. He is his doppelganger. It really? is the craziest thing. And I've seen him there over the years when I've been there. I have to look. I, I host a lot of auctions. So yeah, I'm, I'm there in that room often. You have to go look for the Tim Conway alike. <laughs> <laughs> but there is something about 2019 of which we are just in the prologue and and bumping into you on the street in our neighborhood and having a nice laugh together, which we always do. That makes me grateful. This is my clumsy segue at what we are here to do today. And 
By the way, my daughter will be calling you. I am very grateful for you and your daughter. Thank that you. That will be, uh, that's big on my gratitude list. Excellent. She so, will be my millennial that saves me. She will be the millennial who saves you. That <laughs> is also the name of a good. It is the millennial who saved me. <gasps> <gasps> you go ahead, write the book. I'm good okay. with titles. You write the book. <laughs> I'll just put the flower in the vase and you you come up with all the other stuff. Okay. So, so um, what we do on this show every week is... Either I'm by myself, or as I like to say, by my lonesome, <laughs> or with a guest, and we talk about the five things that really made our week or the last few weeks mm -hmm. good for us. It is gratitude, and gratitude is, you know, certainly trending. Certainly <laughs> trending in 2019 and 18 and 17. Your attitude has to be gratitude, right? Exactly. It's not just a platitude. <laughs> <laughs> so I would like to know what what yours are for this week. For my last week. Or for your last week. Like what they generally Or are. what they will be next week, if you can predict. If I can predict. <laughs> if you um, can use those witchy skills. <laughs> I can. Um, my daughter's been with her dad for the last week, so I will see her tomorrow, ah. for which I am eternally grateful. And I will, you know, since she's been a child, a baby, I will attempt to put her whole head in my mouth because <laughs> <laughs> that's what I did when she was a bit. I remember having like her full earlobe in my mouth as I read a magazine that said, don't be a hovering helicopter parent. And I'm like, uh, her body part's in my mouth. Is this? Is this part Does this count? <laughs> Does this count? <laughs> um, well, I, I, my daughter, who you met, uh, introduced lovely. me. Lovely. Thank you. She introduced me to a very sick show on TV called My Secret Addiction or something. Oh, yeah. And there was a woman who groomed her cat by mouth. Oh, no. And that was something that I shouldn't have shared with you because oh. you may have trouble deleting that thought. Too. Oh, no, you... I'm always doing that to my cats. I just feel embarrassed that it was on a show. Oh, no, yeah. of course not. Gosh, God, who does that? that? Icky. Uh, yeah. Oh, what? That is the craziest thing I've ever it heard. It was the craziest thing that oh. somebody who does that would be willing to do it on TV, too. What self-respecting cat would let a human do that, too? Well, it's there's like, that. Their tongues are made for that, right? Exactly. Maybe she has a very uh, no, she sandpapery eats it. No, she eats it also. Okay, that is too far. I'm okay. going to gag. I'm okay. going to actually vomit now. Okay, sorry. Um, something I am, yeah, anything to do with my child, I'm eternally grateful. Every time I read something, I think it was like it was in a spiritual quote somewhere because I <laughs> love all things spiritual and self help and positive. <laughs> so um, it said, never fall out of awe with your child oh. and the miracle that they are. Oh, that's beautiful. And I do always literally remember it the minute I like look at her. I'm sorry, I get weak. You're gonna, I, <laughs> yeah, no, you that's beautiful. She's my only child and I am mad for her. So she's such a sweet, kind person and I love her. No, I know exactly how you feel. When when my daughter was here last week, I wanted to Velcro her to yeah, me. Yeah, of course. And I'm just bereft now that she's gone. But What's, Kangaroos had it right. Yes, they do have it Absolutely. right. Absolutely. You have to name your child Joey. I could get over that, but still. <laughs> you said you said something so sweet on Facebook because we're Facebook friends, yes. it turns out. And you said all your friends are posting the pictures of their kids going to college. And Ava's now 10? Yeah. Yeah. So and Ava's going to fifth grade. Yeah. yeah. So, oh, yeah. yeah. Totally off. It's funny. So you're just that much younger than all of us. Oh, yes. I'm that much younger. It's funny because... I'm playing um, two characters on this new show, and one of them is a grandmother, and one of them is a young mother. And if you were able to mix them, that exact that's that's like age wise, I'm right for the grandmother, but I'm a young mother, right? Because my child's only ten. It's cool though. It's funny. It's it's really <laughs> when I go to the south, and they're like, "What do you mean you're you're that age and you have a baby? <laughs> well, how's that even my?" Junior, Your granddaughter? Junior was born when I was 16, and then he had his twins when he was 17, and I'm a great-great-great-grandmother, and I'm 41. And I'm like, <laughs> well, it's just different. It's just different It up happens here. when it happens. I love when people think, like, I waited on purpose. Right. People, I waited because that's when it happened. It happens when it's supposed to happen. Right. Also, your great line about her name. Oh, Ava Ray Economopoulos. Um, I've already explained to you, the <laughs> Economopoulos is silent. <laughs> <laughs> I hadn't heard that one before. Yeah, oh, I love, I love oh, how you said you were oh, going to name her Emmy. Oh, yeah, because I've always wanted an Emmy. 
<laughs> That's so great. That's so great. How many letters in her last name? All 13. of them. Oh, oh, all of them. Yes. Yeah. All, all of them completely. We were, <laughs> um, we were just happy to name her the letter A. Yeah. It, it was. Um, but it's funny because people have always tortured me being calling me Carolyn and not Caroline. I was like, I'm naming my daughter Ava. It's so easy. They're going to have that mouthful at the end with the Economopolis. And two days in, how is Eva? And I was oh, like, no. On. How did I not see that? How did I not see that? There it would have been. There is no way that A V A could be pronounced. I know. Eva. It's the letter A, but I should have done like predictive, you know, like Google can do. Like, what are the possible? But of course, Ava, Eva. Well. I know. I know, well, it's completely different. That's terrible. That's unacceptable. Number, unacceptable. Number two. Number two. Um, my spinning teacher, Sue Molnar at SoulCycle, who um, I deeply, deeply love, who is not only like an amazing, she's one of those women that actually can really inspire you to be stronger than you are, but she's so much more than a trainer. She spins in all of your music. First of all, I love it's all from the 70s, and I know every song. And then she'll play hip things. And... Um, she got married this year at 54. Wow. Uh, she survived. For the first time? For the first time. She survived cancer in the last year. And even when she was, you know, had lost her hair and was just fighting this horrendous battle, she was there for all these women and continuing continuing to, like, give. And she's just, I, I literally, she, she makes, if I get to go to one of her classes, it's like, I'm completely grateful. It's just... She's like a therapist and a trainer and a friend and a really great DJ all rolled into one. you oh got to go gosh. to her class. I will. Yeah. She's will. amazing. Amazing. I've never even been to SoulCycle. What? Am I the only New Yorker? Oh, my gosh. You're Don't not in the tell. cult? What? Don't tell. You know what? It's so fun. Like, it, it, it tricks you. I've heard it's amazing. I've yeah. heard it's great. I've well, heard what, you get you addicted. You just do Pilates. That's it. Well, that's it. You're long and lean. You don't need but to. I, I walk a lot. I don't really. Okay. But that was a lie. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, this one's really sappy. Uh-huh. I'm so grateful I got to be with my sisters. Because one, you know, I That's lived... That's not sappy. I lived in New York in the same building as my sister for almost 20 years. Which sister? Cynthia? My sister, Cynthia. Wow. Who is um, a very funny... It's like me in size zero. That's uh, well. That's ni- that's nice. I love her because she reminds me. But um, and uh, like yesterday, I'm completely grateful because I had um, brunch <laughs> with my sister does. and my two big nephews. Ah. And when he was born, he was you know I I completely thought he was mine. And then I got cast when he was six months old. I got cast in my first like big show, Pride and Joy, that Mark Lawrence wrote, and I played. An Upper West Sider who had a six-month-old boy. So it was about you and he. <laughs> in, in my mind. <laughs> yeah. It was Julie Warner and Craig Bierko and I and uh, Jeremy Piven played my husband. Was he addicted to sushi then? <laughs> <laughs> I did notice a lot of raw fish around him. I think it had a very, <laughs> very early beginning. <laughs> you were there. Um, and then, okay, so that's one, two, three. I think I've done the number five. Yeah. We're up to five. Okay. Meeting my best friend at Starbucks. It's so hokey, but, you know, we were, our daughters were in school together from kindergarten on. My bestie, Christine, and uh, going there. And literally, neither of us even drink coffee, but I'm addicted to the whole environment. I'm addicted to the weird guy that's always sitting in the chair, you know, do you go oh, there? Him. Yeah. yeah. And he waves like he's the mayor of Starbucks. Right. I just want to see what all the people are writing on their imaginary, you know, screenplays. Right. I went, yesterday, <laughs> yesterday I, like... This do, you order, hilarious... do you order a drink there? I do. Uh-huh. Okay. It generally doesn't have caffeine. But, um, yeah, I think that's it. Those are five great things. That's and they're this real. Week. And then I'm going back to work tomorrow. So those are my real ones. Right. Yeah. Oh, you're going back to work tomorrow and seeing your daughter tomorrow. Yes. Tomorrow's a big day. Yes. Let's just talk before we wrap up about moving to California. What? That was only four? Oh, it was only four. Really? It was. Okay. It felt like five. And I mean that in the lovingest No, way. I know. It felt yeah. like 20. Really. <laughs> I felt like I went on and on and on. <laughs> uh, let's make something up. Wait. It's Ava. It's your sister. It's uh, your Sue Molnar. Right. And it's um, coffee with... Yeah. That's oh, it four. Was. It was four. It was four. Um, I think I'm going to be really, really sappy. These aren't sappy. I am so grateful to be in New York. Ah. I I moved here in 1989 with 
$300, and I did buy a pair of earrings for $220 the second day. You did? Seriously? Yes. And it has been my date and my friend and my life and career and the fact that I can go to Broadway and I saw Stephanie Block do Cher. And I am so grateful for that. Oh, it's the Cher show good? She is literally magnificent. Have you, I've seen her in so many things. She's like... I saw her in falsettos, I think. Or, I loved her as Trina. And that yeah. was a hard... That's a that's big a, role to fill. It's a big role to fill. And she was brilliant when she was singing I'm Breaking Down. And, um, you know, she is... Somehow she has encapsulated Cher. And, and Chaz Bona was there that night. Have so you that ever crazy. met Chaz? No, but I had to say, I'm like, you don't understand. I was so excited when you were born. Yeah. And he kind of looked at me like, okay. Um, <laughs> but watching her perform in anything and that show. And then this is the other crazy thing. In 1989, or when I went out to do Pride and Joy, I sat next to this lovely man, Floaty Suarez. And he had a script. And I said, oh, are you an actor? And it turned out he worked at NBC. And he was one of the executives I was about to be working for. And we were just and sitting on an airplane. you sat next to him on a plane? Yes. And I haven't seen him in years and years and years. And I go to sh- the share show, and he produced it. Oh, you're kidding. Floaty? No. Floaty Suarez. That is the greatest single yeah. name you, I've you ever got heard it, in my you, life. I mean, the, the whole cast is brilliant. But if you ever get to see Stephanie Block in anything, she is outstanding. Now, the share show is three different actresses Yeah, they're all Cher, amazing. Yeah. And there is a story. Is it a bio yes. show? Yes. There's so tons it's of stuff young, that, yeah. it's young Cher Sarkisian, and then it moves up till Bono and Past and yes. Almond and yeah, you don't know that she's half Armenian and that she yeah, was right. sixteen and Sunny was twenty eight when they met. Oh, I did, not and know you that. and that she just has this, you know, and all these women, their voices are outstanding. I love Cher. It's hard not to love Cher. Yeah, she, she, she was the only thing when I, I when I met Cher, I did have like you know, I was like, Ooh. but um, she's tiny. She is. No, she's got to be like. 5'4". They all are. I thought she was 5'11". Growing up, I mean, didn't you yeah, love the yeah, Sunny yeah, and Cher yeah. show? I, and I looked up to her in a way that seemed tall. Right. Well, we <laughs> You're just... You're taller than her. We, I'm taller than okay, a lot no, of people. I did six. Okay, that's fine. We we just saw Ruth Bader Ginsburg from afar, right before she um, had her surgery a few weeks ago. And she is the sh- the elf on a shelf. I have never seen a smaller. I mean, not like wow, not like Munchkin, but she is a tiny little judge, a, <laughs> a, a, and a formidable one, but tiny. Okay, so your two books that you have to write are the Millennial Who Saved Me, <laughs> yes, and the Tiny Little Judge. I don't know if the Tiny Little Judge is a children's book or if it's just like the most powerful book ever, or the most inspirational book that could be actually in gift shops because it helps it people be. so much. Um, now, do you tell me what your five are that you're grateful for? Oh, I could. Okay. I could. That's not how it works, but I oh. will. I will right now. I barely Bo- remember them. Bossy. Yeah. Well, me. And, yeah, no. It's What fine. are your five? You know what? My, 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 my daughter has a gratitude journal. She does? Yeah. That's great. Yeah. That's great. Okay. Here are my five. My first one is... Um, that <laughs> I can't find it. Oh, my first one is that though it turns out that I'm allergic, I've developed allergies late in life, like two weeks ago. But and they thought I was allergic to lanolin and all cotton and wool, but I'm not. So I don't have to condo my entire wardrobe. Oh. So I'm grateful. I'm not grateful for the allergy, but I'm grateful that right. I keep my clothes. All right. That was the first That's one. That's good. Okay. Did you watch that cute little Marie Kondo? She's also an elf on a shelf. She's a tiny Lilliputian organizer. Oh, no. Oh, yes. I did watch it. But you know what? She just makes me angry. I just I don't, don't know what it is. I know. I, I, I like. What's the big deal? I know. To say thank you to your stuff before you throw it out? I know, but I feel like basically. If I could throw it out, I would throw it out. I wouldn't have to say thank you or write it a note. I think every day. Every day, I, I, I think, I'm going to throw everything out. Every day, I well, just think, I'm going to yeah. sort of, I'm throwing everything out. And I do it by, um, there's a great place to donate at at 86, the St. Andrew's Church in there. Oh, yeah? Yeah. They give, take give, donations? Give, yep, absolutely. Give your clothes and give your toys. Yeah. I donate things all the time, but nevertheless, I don't thank them. Okay. If I had to spark joy, I, I don't know what I would keep. You know, <laughs> I wouldn't keep me. I love 
that spark joy? Spark joy. Spark joy. Thank you. Thank you. I said, you see, I'm going to have an auction of my vast and enormous collection of fish oil bottle <laughs> pills. Yes. And, um, they spark joy. Yeah, empty yeah. notebooks with inspirational quotes on them, which I am unable to walk by. Yeah, yeah. And no. I cannot throw away anything that my mother gave me. Well, right. Nothing. No, that's a rule. You yeah, what, can't. But I just, what about underwear? Do you have favorite underwear from years gone by? No. Okay. You're a Virgo. You're a real Virgo. You I'm a it. real Virgo. Virgos don't like the past. It's just like, uh, this was from yesterday. It's going out. Are you kidding? I revel in the past. <laughs> I revel. I was telling you about when I was 13 and getting braces. Number two, taking a head clearing walk, which I want to do because I don't do it regularly, but I want to do it regularly. It's harder when the weather's cold and you don't feel like it and it requires lots of layers. But my trick is to not do it while looking at my phone because then it doesn't count. Then I might as well be home sitting in the fetal position as I often am. I think that phone, you know, having a child who does not have a phone yet, I realize it's the greatest like, thing. It is the greatest thing. But every time I've lost my phone, they've been the happiest days of my life. I'm like, are you, and then and then I like realize, okay, I lost my contacts this time. Maybe I went too far. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I dropped it in the toilet <laughs> after. No, before, not after. That people seem to ask me, but um, yeah, yeah. Anyway, well, I remember a day when my luggage was lost. I was in Laramie, Wyoming, and I had to wear the same thing for one day, maybe two days, and it was the most freeing thing, except right. for possible. Odors. It was the most wonderful yeah. two days because there was nothing to think about. Yeah, which is why I also like school uniforms. I wore a school uniform. My, I did too. Where it did you great. go to school? Well, I went to a second tier girls' school here in New York called the Lennox School when it was all girls. Why do you say second tier? Why? Why? First of all, that is so turning yourself in. <laughs> why do you say that second tier? Okay, it was a girls' school in New York. I went to all girls' school in Montreal. My mother was captain of the virginity team. Thank oh. you. <laughs> no, I was captain of the virginity team, and my mother was the coach. I got the joke wrong. Oh. I don't know why we hear cheerleaders. No one uh, ever scored. Sorry. We, <laughs> Did you? What was your uniform? It was a gray jumper with a belt, which Kathy Dean wore as a bra once during changing time. It was so old-fashioned. I feel I grew up in the 1940s. We had a cloakroom. We had to wear bloomers for gym. We, we had, had bloomers wear... for gym. That is the most hilarious. We always, we did, we had yeah, a bloomers. tunic. A tunic a and bloomers. A white cotton shirt. A Correct. A tie. We had to wear a tie, bloomers, and a sash. And then um, blue for knee your, socks. For, for gym? For, well, for, and for gym, it was just bloomers. Oh, and your for shirt. gym, we had to wear a gym tunic and bloomers. Oh. For the uniform, we didn't have to wear bloomers, but everything was regimented. And your knee socks, and then we wore Oxford shoes like nuns. Well, we were I, weird. Well, this is even worse. I wore Oxford shoes, but then when all my classmates went, moved in and up and got real, and they wore loafers. Oh, yeah. I was still wearing tie shoes because my mother made me. Oh, <gasps> wow. The humiliation was pretty profound. When loafers came in, that was revolutionary. It was revolutionary. I know, and then you got to put a penny in it, remember? Or a dime if you were one of those girls. Anyway, <laughs> number three, the book The Wife, the novel The Wife, written by my friend Meg Wallitzer. I read it when it came out, I don't know how many years ago, a long time ago, and then it was made into a movie, and Glenn Close just won a Golden Globe for her right. role in it, and I think it was her first leading role movie, Golden Globe, by the way. Anyway. Really? I think so. I she, said, don't um, throw the Golden Globe in the pot and boil it. That exactly. was my response. Mm -hmm. Oh, very good. <laughs> that was a reference to base to to fatal attraction fatal attraction yeah. right anyway i love the book and i've been rereading the book and i like it even more than i did when i read it the first time i think it's wonderful i recommend that number 4 now this hasn't affected my life but i think it does in a very remote way i've been passing in midtown all these stores that say we accept stored luggage have you seen that? No. You can store your luggage here. There's, I think it's a franchise. That is the greatest thing ever. The greatest thing ever. Because wow. people wander around the city with their big darn rolly bags and they right. get in the way and we all get puffy and now they can just store them at the shoemaker. Yeah, that's good. That's good. That's very good. Number five, as always, 
I admire him. I admire even his admirers. And I'm referring to Robert Mueller. And I oh. can't wait till he <laughs> gets He's to become sexier and sexier, hasn't he? Every He's like, week. We, we could have pin up posters of him at this point. Soon we will. I mean, he is so chiseled and so serious and I so know. purposeful. I know. You want to go mess his hair, don't you? <laughs> A little bit. But I think my fingers would bleed. <laughs> anyway... What a treat, Caroline. <laughs> Thank you so much, Lisa. Uh, can we plug your new show? Um, I have two shows. Can we plug your new shows? I have a show. It's uh, called Caroline and Friends, and you'll have to come and be on it. We um, watch funny videos. <laughs> it's on I the Game Show that. Network every day. And then I'm on a new show on the Disney Channel called um, Sydney to the Max. Fantastic. Yeah, and that starts January 25th. That's fantastic, and we will. Yes. We will, and we urge you, um, we wish you safe travels and a joyous, a joyous reunion yes. with your daughter. Yes, and a happy new year. And a happy new year. Thank, Thank you so much. Well, what a wonderful show with Caroline Ray, who makes me laugh with her warm humor and her clever way with words. And for all of you, stay cool and act natural. Bye-bye. That was Five Things with Lisa Bernbach. New episodes every Friday, if she remembers. 